Hey everybody, it's Pastor Aaron with That Church, and we're starting a new book of the Bible today. It's 1 Thessalonians. So, as we do when we start a new book, we read the introduction because it helps us to know where we're going. What is God saying in these next five chapters of this book, in this letter that Paul wrote to the Thessalonians? So let's get right into reading this introduction so that we know what it's all about. What a fascinating letter, full of encouragement and exhortation. First Thessalonians will leave you richer in your spiritual life, and that's what we want. The Apostle Paul brought the gospel to the important city of Thessalonica with an estimated population of 100,000. Originally named Thermai, which means hot springs, the city was renamed Thessalonica after Alexander the Great's half-sister. The city was home to a Jewish community as well as many cults and false religions. After leaving Philippi during his second apostolic journey, Paul and his team arrived at the wealthy city of Thessalonica, the capital of Macedonia. As he preached and taught in the synagogue, many Jews and a large number of God-fearing non-Jews became believers and formed a congregation of Christ followers. And you can find that in Acts 17.4 if you want to go look that up. But Paul and his companions had to cut short their stay for their lives were in danger. Shortly after leaving the city, Paul sent Timothy back to make sure the believers were doing well and living faithfully by the truths of the gospel. When Timothy returned, he informed Paul of the great faith, hope, and love that still burned in their hearts. So he wrote them this letter about two years after the church had been established in order to comfort and strengthen their hearts. The Thessalonians had let Paul know that they had questions about the appearing of Christ, so Paul addressed that subject in his letter. This was a young church that needed to hear from Paul. And there's so much in it we can learn too. Many scholars have concluded that 1 Thessalonians is one of the earliest known writings of the Apostle Paul, along with the books of Galatians and 2 Thessalonians, which makes it perhaps the oldest Christian writing that we have. It's dated back to A.D. 50 to 51, only 20 years or so after Jesus was crucified and raised from the dead. In this deeply personal letter, Paul gives us wise and practical advice on how to live our lives with gratitude, grace, and glory. He speaks to the recipients as their father and their mother. Eight times he addresses the Thessalonian believers as his beloved brothers and sisters. That's what Steve, Pastor Steve and I re refer to you guys as and think of you guys as, is dearly beloved brothers and sisters. And we pray for you and we believe that when we come on each day that we're encouraging you just like Paul was encouraging the people that he wrote letters to. He even describes them as his exhilarating joy. Such a treasure is found in the few pages of this letter. So the purpose, the purpose of Thessalonians. Writing as a concerned father and longing mother, Paul co-authored this letter with his fellow missionaries, Silas and Timothy, to remind these dear believers in Thessalonica of what they had previously taught them and to reinforce what they already knew. Don't we appreciate that when we're reading the Bible that it, it reminds us of what they, we've been previously taught and it reinforces what we already knew because we need to be reminded and encouraged. After hastily departing them and finding no way to return, Paul dictated this letter to encourage them to maintain their hope in God by persevering remaining pure, pursuing God's pleasure, and living in a way that prepared them for Christ's return. The concern is captured at the center of this letter where it says, Then your hearts will be strengthened in holiness, so that you may be flawless and pure before the face of our God and Father at the peering of our Lord Jesus with all his holy ones. And that's in chapter 3, verse 13. Although Paul was encouraged by the Thessalonians' faith, hope, and love, he was still mindful of their vulnerability. So along with his trusted companions, Silas and Timothy, Paul sent them this letter 
to build their spiritual muscles, help them live faithfully, and encourage them as they waited for Christ's return. Author and audience is the next part. We know that the author was Paul with, his, with Silas and Timothy, and we know the audience was to the church at Thessalonica. And then there's a few major themes we'll just go through briefly. Um, faith and the gospel explained and personalized. While 1 Thessalonians isn't an apologia for the gospel, like Romans or Galatians, we still discover much about its essence. Paul speaks of it, the gospel, as a power and as the Lord's message, a message not derived from the words of men, but the very word of God. And then another major theme is living to please God. The theme of living in a way that is worthy of the name Christian and in a way that pleases God runs strong through Paul's letters. And that's why we enjoy them so much because that is our heart's desire, living to please God. And then the last major theme is hopeful preparation for the day of the Lord. Paul wants us to be prepared in hope for the day when Christ returns in full glory. And so as we are getting into the book of 1 Thessalonians, come along with us with these things in mind, realizing what Paul's communicating to the Thessalonian church and what God's communicating to us as we move forward. So remember that God loves you and we love you and Jesus is Lord. And that now I want you to take your, take your place as you take his anointing to your world every day. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye.